way the wind blows When this day is done Breathe Breathe in the air Set your intention Dream with care Tomorrow's a new day For everyone Brand new moon and brand new sun You are always at our side. It is so sad you will not be here 
on the day Aidan and Shane say I do. And so they say their vows today, in love and loving memory of you. First, a few words about you both as a couple, about Avine, and this has been written by Shane. I honestly can't believe my luck that I get to spend the rest of my life with her. I was single for a long time before I met her, and I never set out to find the one, nor did it bother me. I was a bit of a free spirit, but when I met her, it was instantaneous. Before, I would probably tut and turn my eyes up at the love at first sight cliche, but it, it honestly was. If it had boxes to tick, she ticked all of them. She is the most selfless and positive person I know. She just has a love for life in any situation, good or bad. She will always think of others first. Her friends and family are her world, and she will never miss an opportunity or hesitate to put a smile on their faces. I've seen it from day one, how people act around her. She has an infectious personality, which is just built on having fun and a laugh. I don't think I have ever asked her if she wants to do something, be it for a date night, a weekend away, or a holiday, and she has said no. <laughs> Bored is something I will never be with Avi. We have had some pretty massive highs and lows in our three years together. Her brother passing away two years ago was a big shock. He was the apple of her eye and a loss that we will never forget. Like Avi, he was the life and soul of a party. We have also recently brought a little boy Marcus into the world who has brightened up our lives immeasurably. And it's no shock that she is already a super mum. About Shane from Avi. Shane is honestly the most selfless person to walk this planet. Everything he does is for others, and he does it with no complaints. Being a bit of a DIY genius, he's often on call for the family. He worked every hour he had outside of work on our house for eight months to build a home for me and the coming baby. We lived with my mum and dad for a year and a half while we saved and brought our house and renovated it. The four of us got on so well, and my dad would love watching football matches with Shane and he got on well with my mum, he's such a happy person. He has made me smile every day since we met. As mentioned, we've been through a lot. With all of this, Shane still manages to ensure that I am okay with the most thoughtful dates and generally the way he treats me. I feel like the luckiest person in the world. The one word that everyone says when they talk about Shane, he is a legend. He is so much fun to be around. He's the life and soul of a party, especially at weddings, where he loves to dance the night away like a mad thing. Apparently he can even do the worm. Seeing him become a dad to Marcus has been the most incredible thing. The love he shows Marcus and I on a daily basis is out of this world. He always puts us first. I stand here today full of nostalgia and pride to witness my best pal of 16 years become the most beautiful bride. We are all beyond happy for you and Shane and that you chose to marry with all of us here in Spain. Our story goes back to those good old days in school well, let's be honest, I was a total geek and you were Mrs. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Music class was the best, where we laughed throughout. You apparently had laryngitis in each class, teacher always in doubt. Midweek dates from Revels to the Sub, loving life as only Mary's could. Shane, we met in an idle house yet in our 20s without care. Our bro months blossomed also strong, meaning no one wanted our spare room for long. Night out funnels and plenty of beer, you've been like a brother through the years. I thought the future was you and me when you travelled the world and left this group. <laughs> Mary's on tour was only a matter of time, always booking last minute trips with my partner in crime. Busting around Europe was one of the best trips we had. No map or plan, but met two lovely English lads. Stayed in touch with Tom and Will to form Court 4. Abe find the best for my name deals so we saw them more. On route to Will's wedding, I had a peek at the Facebook list. Picked a guy for Abe, a handsome leash lad, hard to miss. Shane, I chose you as a godfather to my son, because I know you'll care as well as be fun. You're a first class lad, and that I really mean. But please stop buying him sports clothes and green. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> on to you. Eleven years since I met the Irish girl crew. Fancy dress Sundays in the church, cheesy music in infernos we searched. I'm taking some credit for you time or not, introducing you at my birthday two years in the trot. A night out in Manchester, put golf we played, but Shane's trip to the hospital caused the romance delay. <laughs> Years later, on my wedding night, Avi stole my main man as a Mr. Right. <laughs> Abe and Shane got the best gift on the 30th of May. This beautiful boy, Marcus, has made their world from that day. The guest, the best grandparents and family, he's one love little man, his godmother being his number one fan. Shane, whom no one could ever speak bad, is a true friend, 
now a husband and amazing dad. Mary, your positive energy and kind soul makes you two of birds a perfect unit as a whole. Two of our best friends, now man and wife, we always knew that Shailene was for life. <laughs> This symbolizes the union of your two lives and Marcus. The central vase of sand now represents your new life together. Although you are separate people, your lives will now be joined together as one. Just as these grains of sand can never be separated and pulled back into their individual containers, so will your marriage be, for two should become one, so shall your family be, forever united. Friends and family, will you celebrate with them, encourage them, and remind them of this day? Yeah. Love is the reason we're all here. And it will take trust to know in your hearts you want the best for each other. It will take dedication to stay open to one another, to learn and to grow together, when it's, or even when it's not easy to do. <laughs> don't know why I'm looking at you then. <laughs> and it will take commitment to hold true to the journey you now commit to share together. Shane, please say I do after each vow. Do you, Shane, Deverell, take this woman to be your wife, to live together in marriage? I do. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, Honour and keep her in sickness and in health and forsaking all others. Be faithful to her for as long as you both shall live. I do. Avine Lennon, take this man to be your husband, to live together in marriage. I do. Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honour and keep him in sickness and in health and forsaking all others. Be faithful to him as long as you both shall live. I do. By the vows you have promised one another, by declaring your unity, by each giving and receiving a ring here today in front of your friends and family's witnesses, and delighted to pronounce you are husband and wife, you may kiss your bride. I'll let you win where no one goes. What am I doing without you and all of the things I've been looking for have always been here outside of my door and all of the time I'm looking for something new it's like, what am I doing without you? I've always been here outside of my door all the time I'm looking for something new what am I doing without you? I'm feeling it right now let's do it right now Think it someday maybe you'll come back to me Feeling right now, do it right now I won't let you slip away We got a little world around. I'll tell you things no one knows In this marriage, you will not be alone in the world You'll always have someone by your side Someone to laugh with, someone to cry with Someone who shares your path, smooths your path Someone who faces life with you in all its wonderful diversity, in all its trials, in all its triumphs. Today is one of the happiest days of your lives. You have thousands and thousands of happy, joyous days ahead of you. This whole life, this precious love of yours you've been lucky to find, is an act of personal magic. If times ever get rough, ever get tough, remember this moment. Remember this beautiful place. Remember Spain, the sea, the sun. Remember your friends and family here present for you. Remember how full your hearts were at this moment and let those memories inspire you to nourish, to cherish and to protect your marriage. I can see the future coming to you Crying away the sadness and rags And I can find a faith in days I've wasted Being around enough to feel alive And when the world is broken, hard and cold Les châteaux de sable façonnés de mes doigts Le temps n'épargne personne, hélas 
Les années passent, l'écho s'évade sur la dune du pila Au gré des saisons, des photos matons Je m'abandonne à ces lueurs d'autrefois Au gré des saisons, des décisions Je m'abandonne Quand les souvenirs s'en mêlent Les larmes me viennent Et le chant des sirènes me replonge en hiver Oh mélancolie cruelle Harmonie fluette, euphorie solitaire Combien de farces, combien de frasques Combien de traces, combien de masques avant nous laisser là-bas Poser les armes, prendre le large Trouver le calme dans ce vacarme avant que je ne des photos matin, je m'abandonne à ces lueurs d'autrefois. Au gré des saisons, des décisions, je m'abandonne. Quand les souvenirs s'en mêlent, les larmes me viennent et le chant des sirènes me replonge en hiver. Oh, mélancolie cruelle, harmonie fluette, euphorie solitaire. I said to her, the last thing I said to her getting out of the car was make sure he looks after you. And here we are three years later, uh, married with a mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm delighted that you have taken my voice, but just don't take it so literally next <laughs> So please put your hands together for the bride. Thank you. 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 Thank with us, not just today, this whole week has been incredible, so much fun, to the point that this morning, um, obviously you want you to have fun on your wedding day, but you want everybody else to have a great time, but seeing everybody last night having a ball, I was like, pressure's off, whatever happens tomorrow, it doesn't matter, because seeing all your faces having a great time over here is what means the world to us, so thank you so much for being here, and that's all I want you to say, it's just it's so, so special. It means the world to myself and Shane and to my husband. Um, he really does. He's just one in a million. And um, Francis for welcoming me into your family. Thank you so much. And thank you for bringing this guy into my life. And to my own mum and dad, my inspiration, they, uh, I don't know, I've no words. Um, they're everything to me and they just make every day worth living. That's what they do. And they've given us this incredible journey and day and week and everything and I'll never be able to thank them enough and that's, that's it. So. Aww. Okay first of all I just want to wish to thank all of you for coming here today. My own family of, over here, um, some of you haven't met yet but maybe during the night we'll meet up. Um, I would say a very big thank you to everybody, all of Shane's friends in particular because they're like my, my extended family. 
and do them for a long time down there. You see them, you'll see them, <laughs> you'll, you'll hear them, and you'll see them. But um, we got sort of—it's like we all grew up together in Port Arlington, and um, these guys mean the world to Shane, and they mean the world to me, and I mean that big time, absolutely. We had, um, we had happy times that wrecked my house, <laughs> and, uh, but all forgiven lads. So um, we've had great times together, and you know when you all when you all dispersed during the recession, I missed you dearly. But now you're all back, and it's just wonderful. Fuck the Celtic um, tiger. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to be very quick. The first time I met Oliver Avo was quite quite sort of casual, typical Shane Deverell. But um, he phoned me from Port Leash and said, "Oh man, I'm dropping over. Is there a bit of food in the fridge?" That that was the first thing Shane would love to dinner. So I said, "Come on." And then at the end of the conversation, he said to me, "Well, um, Avian's coming." So I went from sort of thing, it takes about 15 minutes to get from Port Leash to Rosanna, as everybody would know, and um, talk about multitasking, I had to get in high gear. <laughs> Kate was in a state, there was one small chicken in the oven, and um, no wine. So sort of, what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> so it was up and down to Linda for the bottle of wine, um, and I thought, well, I'd put, put the chicken on a big platter, and we just cut it apart, and then it won't look so miserable. So um, <laughs> but anyway, my first view of Amy was the back of the house arriving in one pair of denim shorts, and my first thought was, in my next life, I'll have legs like that. She arrived in anyway, and I thought, oh God, Shane dived straight for the chicken. I thought, there won't be a bit left for her by the time he's finished with it. So anyway, I said, I couldn't say to him, get your hands out of it, out of the plate of food, would you? So, the evening couldn't didn't eat very much. I thought, is there something wrong with the food, or is she nervous? Because, um, but after about five or ten minutes, I thought, well, she's my type of girl, and she certainly is. Um, and I also always said, when Shane finds a special woman, she will be special, and that's exactly what he found. So, Yay. Yeah. Um, but I have to say, during the situation, I was trying to say, sort of, you know, we have your sort of serve chicken, and you're thinking, is she the right one? Which should be good enough for my precious son? <laughs> and there's about 10 different conversations going on at the same time. But um, after about five minutes, I realised, yes, she's, she'll be fine and, and nice and casual and uh, easygoing. Um, I think it Shane even make a great team. We all we all agree, don't we? Yeah. Yes. So what makes a great team? Um, I think a good work ethic, which is really important to be both out I can see that. Um, great parents, which they proved to be, and um, and they absolutely adore each other. So I think it, all in all, it's good. It's good values and good qualities that make up for a really good relationship. So I, I have no worries in that, in that area. Um, and I, they also have a great ability to make the ordinary into extraordinary which is unique. So I remember one time we went down to the Hainshaw in, in a tent, and as Jerry said, the, the fold-up chair was bigger than the tent. <laughs> but the, um, it, it could have been a five-star hotel or under a two-man tent, and they, they just got the same joy out of it, and that's a great quality to have, starting off. Um, and they also think their love of children, and they both have proved that with their charity work they've done down through the years, um, their ability to be parents, and their ability to reach out to children, and families who are less privileged than we are. So I, I admire them for that and, and um, keep up the good work. <laughs> yeah, one day, I, we go back to the recession and, and those guys over there, but one day I said to Shane, what do you miss most of all about uh, being away? Because they were gone for eight years, the two lads, and it was, it was tough times for them and for all of us. And I thought he would say, I really miss my mom. But no, who did he miss? Can you give a guess? The boys. <laughs> but I have to say, that when they were growing up together, I always said in football, in a round, of, in a club, it was one in, all in. And I think there's one in today, and they're all in, and they're all back. So give them a big round of applause. Yay! Yay! Then Shane moved to Manchester, and there's a very special man here today, Will. Where is he? Stand up, Will. <laughs> Where are you? There's Will. Oh, well. Will, Will, Will. Well, Will spent uh, three days chatting up Amy in a hostel somewhere in the world <laughs> and uh, thought he could win her over but unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> he met a beautiful wife before you go any further but that was Shane's second home Manchester and I often said to Shane said if I don't get back to Ireland during your session I'll hit Manchester and I can see how that was his second family and that gang are over there and they're, they're a great bunch as well so thank you for looking after me <laughs> Where am I with this? Let me see. Um, You're doing well. Doing great job, man. Do you think so? Brilliant. Did you give me 10 out of 10, Jerry? Yeah, oh, definitely, definitely, Francis, yeah. Um, 
Okay, I will, I'll leave all the childhood stuff to Mark because there's, there's, some, there's some strange ones. Uh, <laughs> together. Um, but there was, one, there was one episode in... My mum and dad were, were very close to Shane and he had a great bond with them because they spent many times up, in, up at the farm in Rosellis. And even though they both had really set the house on fire one night with, with the electric blanket, and uh, at this one stage then Mark took off in a tractor and Shane after him. So you can imagine the nightmare she had trying to mind up there. Did you um, ruined my speech, Matt. Oh my God. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> okay, and again, it's Mark and Shane. They, they, they grew up together and had money around, but it's the one thing they did was they encouraged each other and they had. Um, in their personal achievements and are always there for each other and my wish is that Aveen and Shane and Mark and Ceci will always be there for each other down through the years it's really important to me um, yeah let's say my, my mom and dad were very important grandparents of Shane and they thought about to take, make mince pies and uh, what else yeah. and um, and sell them and sell them, and sell them. <laughs> yeah it's a bit of marketing genius here okay I'm nearly done um, but before, there's a few, a few more people I want to say thank you and that's Nori and Ger. They would be absolutely wonderful to um, to Shane. They've opened their arms and welcomed to the family. And uh, as I say, they've helped them to achieve their, their houses and their house and live with them and put up with them for so, so many months. Um, so thank you very much for that. We really appreciate it. I also want to thank my own family over here for the support that they've given them getting themselves over here um, today. And um, particularly my brother Billy, who's, who is Shane's godfather. So thank you very much. There's also two ladies here that I need, I need, I need to say thank you, and that's to Nanny Calcal and Nanny Lennon, wherever you are. Oh. An inspiration to us all. One, Nanny Calcal's over here. First, Nanny Lennon. Here, Live life as full and as long as you do, because you're, you're absolutely amazing. And thank you. For you. There's two words I want to leave with, with Shane and Nadine, and that is to love each other as much as forever and ever. And also, when things get tough, just, just give gratitude to everything that you have in life. Thank you all very much and this part. She's made her mum and dad really proud. Uh, what can we say about her? Um, lots, I suppose, but over the last couple of days, I've been thinking about what to say, and Noreen and myself had a discussion that I, I chatted with Kira on. Look at our little sound bites, our inspiration that, you know, that you say the right thing and don't make a fool of yourself. I was reminded by uh, Noreen constantly of a very good friend of mine, Paddy McGuire, who's down here. And Paddy's daughter got married in Portugal. We were at the wedding and he said, Paddy didn't drink for two days before the wedding. He didn't have a drink before us. He did for months. For months, I'm getting this. I said, I go, let's see. Anyway, it's, uh, so I checked out a few things. And to encapsulate what someone means to you for their whole life, is it's kind of difficult, you know. But it's, Francis has said, and everyone has said, and David says, it's great to see everyone here today. And myself and Noreen are delighted that it is so, and to pick such a beautiful place and such a beautiful venue, which I haven't seen until today, so I was kind of knocked out, so it was fantastic. And there's been some epic journeys to get here from Hong Kong, Bangkok, Australia, Canada, America, Manchester, Castletown and Wexford, everywhere. It's been fantastic. Um, Amy has many great strengths. Um, she's selfless, giving of herself at all times, intelligent, thoughtful, cheery in a good way, mischievous, <laughs> independent thinking, hard working, but you know what, she's a bit of a scallywag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when she was a young teenager down in Wexford, and all that crew, hands up the Wexford crew who grew up down in Castletown. So, so many stories uh, pertain to our, our other kind of life down in North Wexford and the yellow bellies and we loved them so much and they loved the dubs down there believe it or not not like most rest of Ireland do <laughs> <laughs> anyway this particular time anyway we have a little uh, chalet down there and uh, I went into the bedroom she had a bunk bed and there was a denim jacket on the floor it was Aileen's denim jacket so I picked it up right and I went to hang it up and 10 John Player Blue fell out of the top of she was about 12 or 13 John Player Blue Anyway, I said nothing, I just put them back in the pocket, right? Later on that evening, I was out with Noreen, and I said, uh, by the way, Noreen, uh, I found her John, 10 John Perry Blue in a jacket. Don't say anything to her, it's just one of those things, it's a phase. That was never going to work. <laughs> so, Noreen, as you all know, 
is so protective of her children and so believing of her and everything i mean i know everything is wrong i know they can do no wrong wrong on a big here nothing they can do is wrong <laughs> So I said, don't say anything to do. So that night, anyway, we were up in the anchor having a beer. And she says, oh, by the way, I spoke to Amy the bed <laughs> Oh, really, yeah? I told you not saying that. I know, I spoke to her. She was only minded then for Jennifer Connelly. <laughs> so I said, of course she was, no. Of course she was. I mean, of course she was. Of course. Absolutely. And, you know, then that's, that's not even to go into some of the lewdest graffiti I've ever seen on the inside of a wardrobe door in a girl's bedroom. Or I was really, really worried about where this girl was going in life, you know. And Laura Gallum with her, and the graphic diagram, I mean, I don't even want to go there. No, I won't, I won't, I promise, I won't, I won't, I won't. But uh, Amy went to a posh school in South Dublin where she met Laura and uh, Loretta. It was a really kind of posh, well, we thought it was posh. You had to pay. Right? So, she got on well in school now, in fairness, I have to say, but she was never going to be headgear material. Absolutely no chance. So I'm sitting in my office in the Sunday World one day, quietly going about my business, and the phone rings. and. Uh, Jenny, my, my secretary, says, uh, there's a woman on the phone, it doesn't sound too good, you know? I said, okay, who's it? It's Miss Cogan, she's the principal of Loretta. Right, okay, that's Asian school. So this woman comes on the phone and says, Mr. Lennon? I said, oh, yes, hello. Uh, this is Miss Cogan here, I'm the principal of Loretta. I said, okay. Yeah, is everything okay? I'm thinking, oh, she had an accident, she fell or something. Um, th it was the time of the teacher strike, and she says, um, and the students were going into town to protest to support the teachers. Right? So she says, do you know your daughter has gone into town to support the teacher strike? So I said, is she? Good. Oh, ish, sort of. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and then she said, no, you don't seem to realize she's gone into town. I said, okay, so she's gone to town. <laughs> yeah, it's a student protest. She's gone into town. I said, yeah, well, okay, she's gone to town. She is the student protest. <laughs> I said, well, oh, that's, yes. yes. That's my girl. So that's my girl. She's an independent thinker. It's been said, it's been talked about, it's in there, it's hanging around. It's there constantly with us. These gatherings are tinged with sadness for us. We know that, right? We can't have the big fella here. We know. But he's here. Yeah. 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 He's here. Uh, it changed everything. It changed everything. And, uh, but you know what? Uh, life is a bus journey. Some people get off earlier than others. And he got off a bit too early. Everyone's getting off at some stage. But that's just the way it is. So I know you all feel that. So, yeah. So, when discussing AD and trying to, <laughs> trying to figure out this thing, this thing that people have, some people have a thing, she's got a thing, right? And, you know, I, I was chatting away and, you know, I'm trying to get a word, and there's no word I can say that really kind of sums it up to me. But she brings people together. Karen said to me to the she has an ability to bring people together. And I think that's a fantastic thing. She's at the epicenter of everything, from raising money for a charity in Africa, uh, you know, to go out there to an orphanage and spend some time there and bring the money over and we arranged the event. She was at the epicenter. Brilliant. Still going to this day. Not he's the 2016 <laughs> champion, just in case you didn't know that. <laughs> um, so, you know, Avian is the pebble. Avian is the pebble you drop in the pond. And the first ripples are our family, and then it keeps going, and it keeps rippling, and it keeps going out and out and out. And when I look around here today, and I see all the connections, young and old, and the, you know, the intrinsic values that all these people hold, and how close all the families are, you know, the Deanses, the Lennons, the Walshes, the Barwell, all grew up together. You know, we're missing Philly, we're missing Liam, and quite recently we're missing Fran, like we're missing them all here today. But it's a great testament to her that she has that ability to draw all these amazing diverse people together and it's a wonderful trait it stood her well and i think it'll stand her well in her life because she's she's never going to lose that so that's a great thing yeah. 
So, okay, to shame. Oh, what do we say about this guy? So Noreen and myself discussed this fella, and she said, just make sure you tell them that we love him. <laughs> 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 so, I was, you know, yeah, I said, I will, Noreen, I'll do that. So I did that, right? But, you know, from the time Noreen, from the time Noreen and myself first met him, uh, and we knew and hoped that Shane and Avian would be a lifelong couple. I just, you know, you just get it with a guy the first time you see him. I don't, you know, there's no, you don't get a second chance to make a first impression. And um, he didn't have to make an impression. He, you know, the old movie things, he'd be a strong, silent type. That'd be, right? He's a fantastic listener, which is a trait I don't possess myself. <laughs> uh, I was trying to figure out, he must have a few weaknesses, he must have a few bad points. Well, he has. Man United, Manchester United. <laughs> It's hard to believe that my grandson is probably going to grow up being a red supporter in a Leeds-obsessed world that we live in. But he is a dog, the old in fairness. So he got a kid early on. So I hope he someday goes down and has a guest game for old Dempsey's or something. You know, he's a blue, true, and true. Anyway. But, so, you know, back to Shane. Francis, you've raised two fantastic boys, uh, two parents now, two, you should be immensely proud of them, they are two fantastic men, and there will be two great dads, and I know that, right? Shane's an engineer, here, and he's responsible for building the Lewis Cross City tracks from Parnell Street Sorry. to Broadstone. <laughs> <laughs> and that is really, really apt, you know, because what he's doing is built, and it will last a long, long time, it's really strong, it's straight, it's in the ground, and it's going to be part of our city. And that's like him. He's built the last, he's strong, he's straight, he's a top class guy. And he is so dependable. He's been a great inspiration and support to us in what's been a very difficult couple of years. He came into our lives at a great time, and then unfortunately, we had this tragedy. I can't thank him enough for what he did. He was a barber's guy. So, in conclusion, uh, there are too many people to thank. So, excuse me if I leave someone out. But the bridesmaids, the bride, the girls, the wedding party look amazing. Uh, yeah, here, here. To, my, to my goddaughter, Kelly Deans, thank you so much for everything. Um, our goddaughter, sorry, I said, I said I wouldn't say why. <laughs> uh, when it comes to weddings and parties, I mean, a Rossa only gets a bus once holiday. So she spent her morning with Murray and looking out to the girls. So to Murray, but to Rossa, fantastic Rossa, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Anyway, to the two great grandmothers. Listen, thanks for sticking around long enough to see this live. <laughs> that is just great. And finally, Kieran, great to have you back for a while. Anyway, from Australia, uh, we love seeing you, but we don't mind where you live as long as we know you're, you're there. So you're great, and thank you so much. And finally to Noreen, who has to put up with me. Uh, the John Prine song always springs to mind, you know, despite of ourselves, we're going to end up living on a rainbow. Uh, I know where Aiden gets it all from. She gets it from her man, especially her stunning beauty. So finally, I didn't tip anyone off, but I want her to, with the timing of the speech, so I want to share out a divvy, right? <laughs> on the pool. So thank you all very much indeed. Enjoy the rest of it. I'd like to start by acknowledging the exceptional job the boys have done for These girls have been truly amazing for AB and getting ready for today. They successfully orchestrated the largest hen party the county of Wexford has ever attended. The female cool. population of glory doubled in size when they got here. <laughs> and don't you look absolutely beautiful? Yes. I was shown only by the lady of the moment herself, Avi, and you look absolutely unbelievable. 
So actually, sorry, a round of applause for Aoife, Roisin, um, Kelly and Laura. Now, a few months ago, Shane said to me, look, I really don't want you speaking at my wedding, but you're my only brother. <laughs> <laughs> so will you do it? Now, putting aside the bad manner delivery of this important request, I quickly remembered the character assassin assassination I took off him a year ago, so I said I would. <laughs> Shane, payback's a bitch. <laughs> So let me start by telling you a little bit about my relationship with Shane. We met in the 80s under absolutely horrible circumstances. <laughs> my dog Smitty had just died and Shane was offered me as a replacement. <laughs> I really did want that puppy but I'm not one for complaining so I said alright, whatever. Now the 80s in Ireland as most of you know it was a simple time. <laughs> Teletext was our information provider. <laughs> Wooden spoons for use to bait the arse off your own. <laughs> Especially if you left the immersion on. <laughs> and our TV entertainment consisted of weird spotty puppets, twink thin game of charades, and mildly shifting for now in the back page. <laughs> now, through the years, I've seen Shane grow from a really annoying pain in the arse. <laughs> to a slightly less than I'm paying the <laughs> Growing up, he was seen as the perfect son. Not that he was perfect at all, but he was really good at looking perfect. <laughs> I was obviously bigger and stronger, and if you, so if you ever got hurt playing soccer, it was obviously my fault. He used to get me in trouble so much that he would actually physically hurt and mark himself, just so I'd get in trouble over it. <laughs> He'd even drop a silent fart at the dinner table, just so I could play. <laughs> He just smiled from the other end of the room going like that. <laughs> but I'm getting bang, bang, bang. Uh, needless to say, separately, up against each other, we were hard work, but together as a team, we were an absolute nightmare for people. <laughs> nah, you deserve a knighthood, really. Well done. <laughs> After a while, there wasn't a babysitter or a professional time milder in the whole county beach who would touch it. <laughs> And if they did, there was a serious cash exchange. <laughs> My ma would actually pay sometimes just to have the break from us, to be honest. We did awful stuff. I'm going to give you a few examples, because it's ridiculous. At Christmas, when it actually when it snowed in Ireland years ago, um, we used to build snowmen at the front door of our neighbours' houses, and looking right into their front door, we'd then go and knock on the door and do a leg and have a look, and watch them just getting scared. It was great fun. <laughs> We'd fleece the local uh, sweet shop from up for his ice cream. Shane would be the cute little distraction ordering penny sweets while he filled the tennis bags with chocolate ice cream. And of <laughs> we were banned from every video shop in the of Port Arlington, as we didn't really get the concept of having to return videos. <laughs> New accounts with fake names were used to get more. Uh, there's still loads in the home to this day. I dread to know what our bill is at the moment. <laughs> We were notorious prank callers. That got so bad that my mum actually had to install a payphone into our house. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, man, it didn't take us long to figure out that we could drill a hole in the 50p, tie a string to it and just drop it in and out. <laughs> <laughs> we got off lightly with the wooden spoon, to be honest. We were terrible. At this point, actually, I'd like uh, to ask my groomsmen colleagues just to drop uh, a few pieces of paper on each table. <laughs> Anyway, moving swiftly along, uh, one of the rules of the best man's speech, you can never talk about ex-girlfriends, and I don't intend to do that whatsoever. However, that rule only applies to ex-girlfriends. At this point, I'll ask my beautiful uh, colleague, groomsman, to... Oh no, you only... No, sorry, sorry. You can now open up those pieces of paper and pass them around. And you'll see what I mean. It's fair to say that Shane had his fair share of experimenting before Evo. <laughs> I'll just take a drink here and um, I shall go now. Oh my god, this is my favourite! Get him south, I particularly apologise for, uh, for that. They are lovely white ones. Okay. Great hugger, if anybody wants a hug during the night. Anyway, in preparation uh, for this speech, I consulted many of these same friends of Shane and I asked them to give me one word that describes Shane best. The two words most common were kind and fun. 
So I was thinking of a story from his past that combines both of these words. And one story in particular comes to, he comes to my brain. So I went to Manchester one weekend many years ago, and he and his housemates were having a barbecue. A few of the lads here today were at it also. Anyway, the drinks start flowing, and it's fair to say we were all having a really good time. In fact, we started drinking through a funnel. Obviously, uh, a normal glass was too slow, and we needed to get into it a bit quicker. Uh, so anyway, the way it works is uh, you get down on your knee, you put a funnel, uh, the end of a funnel in your mouth, uh, the end of a tube, sorry, in your mouth, connected with a funnel, and someone stands above you and pours the drink into the funnel. And you drink it in like two seconds, it's terrible. Uh, so anyway, this was going on for a while, and a few of the lads talked about taking it up a notch. Well, Shane wanted to take it up a notch. He dared one guy to drink the water from a goldfish bowl, which he spotted in the nearest windowsill. <laughs> with that, the proud Mancunian, Rob, there, where, where are you, Rob? There you go. Uh, uh, with, with your reputation in line, Rob, Shane then pours the goldfish bowl into the funnel with the aim of trying to keep the goldfish out of harm's way with his hand. <laughs> However, one slippery little fish didn't quite make it and made it all the way through into Rob's belly there. <laughs> It gets way worse than that. <laughs> Shane's housemate shortly noticed uh, that one of her beloved goldfish was missing and she started crying hysterically. <laughs> Shane, the kind man that he is, brought her inside and made her an old cup of tea and tried to comfort her. He felt really bad and he just explained that these things are silly things that happen at house parties. And even though it wasn't his fault, he would replace the goldfish the next day. No problem. He eventually managed to cheer up and then he went outside and rejoined the party. However, half an hour later, Shane's housemate heard from the words outside were chug, 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 and she was absolutely horrified to look out the window and see Shane down the last remaining goldfish. <laughs> he really struggled to explain that one. Anyway, so kind and fun, that's, that's the story that's linked to So there are literally countless stories I could bring up from Shane's past. Like the time he went for a run through the main streets of Fort Arlington on top of parked cars until the Gardaí spotted him and brought him home. Like the time in work he told someone, someone where to dig and he ended up cutting a very important cable and shutting down uh, the internet of the city of Manchester for a whole day. <laughs> like the time he had 10, 10, 20 fertilizer and then had to go get his stomach pumped. <laughs> You fed me, you fed me. Calm down, it's my speech. <laughs> and more recently, he completely messed up our leg length for our trousers and our suits. <laughs> you think an engineer to know the difference between inches and millimeters? Big Egypt. But I'm not going to go into all of that. Instead, I'm going to focus on the smart moves he's made. His friendships, his parental skills, his career. It's all a reflection of the incredible man that he's become. But really, the smartest move he's ever made is able. Yeah. Shane is a modest man, and he doesn't make a big deal or fuss about any of his achievements. So I'm going to do it for him. Here are a few facts that you may or may not know about the film. To be fair, he was actually one of the top of his engineering class in graduating from UCD. Big deal. He's recently become chartered in his field of engineering. He ran the Dublin Marathon in just over three hours. He built a medical centre in Costa Rica for poor people. He also built his own house for his own. He has travelled to every country in South and Central America. Two of the highlights being that he starred in the movie as an FBI agent. <laughs> and he scaled the tallest building in Bolivia dressed as Spider-Man. Shane Unleashed Devil is also an undefeated boxer with a proud record of one and all. <laughs> Much like uh, five money away, whether undefeated, but he fought a few more times for it. <laughs> he and his talented band Take Fat <laughs> sang and danced their hearts to victory in the 2016 Hook Factor competition. <laughs> Brian Kennedy Rigged. calling it a beautiful performance. <laughs> and finally, 
He went viral on the internet with over 100,000 hits for his rendition of Can't Take My Eyes Off of You. Right there. Right there. I'm sure you all saw it. Hopefully, he doesn't make a reappearance tonight. I'll try. He also won an egg and spoon race uh, at the town festival back in 92 when he was eight years of age. He also mastered the potty training at that, that year as well. Anyway, behind every great man is a greater woman. And Avian's achievements have been put in shame to shame ever since they left. <laughs> While Avo is winning Rising Star Awards, Shane is just rising out of bed. <laughs> Avian raises thousands upon thousands for charity, while Shane raises his eyebrows when he gets confused. <laughs> and while Avo, Avian is listed as one of the millennials shaping the future of Ireland, Shane is shaping the dance floor in coppers. <laughs> Arnie, we're very proud of Avian. Can everybody give a round of applause for the lady of the moment, Avian Lady of the moment. Now, we're on to this section of the speech where we're supposed to give a little bit of advice. And as a recently married man myself, I think I can do this with confidence. People say, never go to bed angry. But I think you should go to bed angry, if the alternative is to stay up and argue. Makes sense. The best way to remember your anniversary is to forget it the first time. Shane, she's less likely to argue with you if you're cooking or cleaning at the same time. Remember, Shane, that you are the head of the house. But Aveen is the neck, and she can turn the head any time she wants. <laughs> Avo, I'm sure you only know this about Shane, but food is a great way of just getting to shut up and stop complaining. <laughs> and finally, Shane, always hold hands when you're out in public, because if you don't, you'll shut up. <laughs> now, if I can uh, get serious for a second. One of my greatest joys in life has been watching Shane grow into the man he is today. He is kind, dependable, loyal, hardworking, and ambitious. He is a family man, always putting the needs of those closer to him first, and I couldn't be prouder of the person you are, the father you have become, and the husband you will be. Basically, I'm glad I didn't get that puppy. In 18, he has found someone who shares all of these principles. She is one of the kindest and most genuine people I know, motivated by love and respect of people. We really couldn't be happier with you joining our family, although we've seen you as a daughter and a sister right from the very start. <laughs> Together, Shane and Nadine light up every room they go in. And with little Marcus by their side, that light is even brighter. I want to thank the Lennon family for welcoming us into their lives so openly and we look forward to sharing so many happy times ahead. As brothers, Shane and I share childhood memories and grown-up dreams. Following the arrival of Marcus earlier this year, 2017 has just provided his second dream today in A.B. and saying, I do. And unless Jose Mourinho calls him for a trial, I think he's done for this year. <laughs> So everybody, if you could please stand and raise your glasses. Shane and Nadine, everybody. Shane and Nadine. Thank you, He's a great man around the house. Like, he literally did, the climate couldn't have been better for actually fixing up a shell of a house and turning it into a beautiful home. He is uh, a great man at recycling. You give him a couple of pallets of furniture and he will make you, or a couple of pallets and he will make you some gorgeous furniture out of it. He's so good at recycling, he's even after making his uh, confirmation uh, outfit into a wedding suit. <laughs> That's lovely. Okay guys, put your hands together now for the groom, Mr. Yeah. Shane Bradley. Yeah. 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 Hello. Oh, yeah. um, let me just start with, again, just saying thank you to you guys too, because it just it means the absolute world to us that you all came out here. It's This whole experience just makes us realise how blessed we are to have the people that we have in our lives, so really, from the bottom of our hearts, thank you. Thank you. I, I just, there's two things that I completely underestimate about getting married. I think the first is just from this week, just, I didn't think, I, I, I feel 
the way I do. It's just completely overwhelming. Honestly, the the love and generosity you guys have shown us is just it's completely overwhelming. And that's on top of the effort of actually getting here. Like every one you got flights and like Jerry was saying before too, like some of the places that you travel from is just it's unbelievable. It's, it's mind blowing really, so just, just thanks. The second thing is the work that Avian put into this. Uh, aided us by no way because there was emails, phone calls, everything going on that I was oblivious to. I I didn't do any of this. <laughs> <laughs> I, my gig was the house and finding a suit. And as you can see, I only done, done one of those jobs. <laughs> well, you did anyway. too. No, I saw, to put our year into perspective, there was, there was a night last Christmas when we were both sat on our laptops on the couch doing a little bit of research. She had hers resting on her bump and I looked across her laptop and there was all these pictures of just beautiful venues. There was beaches, palm trees, sunshine, it was gorgeous. Then I looked onto mine and the Google search engine was open and I just read, cheapest while I'm fighting Dublin. <laughs> 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 oh, <God. laughs> All right, a couple of mentions. Firstly, groomsmen, um, thank you to you guys. I've met you all at different stages in my life, but one thing that you all have in common is just a complete appreciation and dedication to having great crack. You're, you did a great job this morning just setting the place up too, just keeping me calm too. So thank, thanks very much. You're looking great too. So. <laughs> Just slightly outshone by the beautiful bridesmaids. <laughs> you girls are gorgeous inside and out every day of the week. Honestly, Avian could not ask for four better girls to, to help her out today. Um, just you've done an incredible job on the Hindu, like Mark was saying. I don't think Gory and Castletown have seen the likes of it before. <laughs> um, so yeah, just just fair play and you know, you just before you mean so much to, to me as well as Avian, so Thanks a million. I'm also going to, to give a mention to the two incredible nanas because individually they're incredible, but I think the biggest compliment I can pay them is that they've also shaped two incredible families. Uh, I hit the jackpot with Avian, but when you consider the families that I'm marrying into two, it is just, it's the Euro millions of jackpots. It, honestly, I just I feel so lucky. I also have to mention the Power family too, which is the Castletown family, because between the three of you, there was a weekend three years ago at the Buskin when I met the majority of you, Ger and Noreen included, and I just straight away, I just I knew I was around something really, really unique and special. There's just, there's incredible love in that place, and really, you should have torn strips on me, because we both turned up in matching <laughs> double down. Like, it was, it was we were going line dancing. Like, if that happened now, God help me. But honestly, you, you welcome me in so much, so uh, thank you. <laughs> On top of that, then I get to this table and it just becomes mind blown how lucky we are. Uh, before I do, I just want to mention some absent friends and family. Uh, so there's Thomas and Owen, Aileen's granddads, who, let's not forget, also help those great, or shape those great families. Nanny and Bob, my, my mum's parents, who she mentioned, who I only have, have fond memories of. Uh, there's Philly, who, when I say I was welcome in, in Castletown, nobody put their arm around me more than Philly. Uh, Jason, Bigler. <laughs> Jason, who a lot of you all know, but it, Jesus, God help us if he was here. Uh, one of the, he was one of my best friends and continues to inspire me and the lads from home just to live life a certain way. Uh, and of course then there's Ronan. Uh, I didn't have the honour of getting really close to Ronan. I'm fairly sure it, it's, we would have gone on pretty well. It's something I will always regret. Uh, although from the countless stories from you guys I do feel I know. Um, one thing I do know is that stories are what make legends. Legends last forever, and the one thing I would ask you guys is that you tell those same stories to Marcus, because we want our little boy to know what a legend his uncle was. <laughs> All right, this table. 
here on, we miss the hell out of you. Uh, but we're just loving the fact that you're loving Australia. Having you around this week, Mick Marks, that's one of the highlights. And I think just an old build up to it. The, the fact that the, uh, the biggest talking point was how excited everyone was to meet you. said it already. So really, it's, just, it's great having you here. From the brother-in-law to brother, best man. <laughs> you don't need. <laughs> <laughs> really did. But you know what, I, I stood for the best man for Mark a little over a year ago, and uh, I deserve that. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, it was one of the proudest moments of my life, standing as best man for him. And I can't thank you enough for what you've done to me too, because I, I, I have looked up to you all my life, even if... We we had some serious reds. <laughs> okay, parents, you three guys, I, I don't know where to start with because we are literally so lucky to have you. Um, Jer and Nora, we moved in with you guys for 18 months, and I think in most situations that would be it would be difficult. But the, the most difficult part for me was trying to come to terms with the fact that my in-laws were so much cooler than I was. <laughs> 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 I'd like to blame the Don Avian being pregnant, but uh, to be a lie. Yeah. Uh, they more than us. They found you. We all flew in for three months and stayed for 18 minutes. Norris, you are possibly the most thoughtful person on the planet, uh, and you have been a lot of things to us. She has been a lot of things to us, so much so that I had to make a list. So, there's the obvious, cook, cleaner, lawn, plate, taxi, babysitter. But then you get into things like backpacker, party planner, travel agent, personal shopper. And then there's what sets knowing apart. Painter, laminate floor installer. Warm border slash dry liner. I remember there was a day that when we were renovating a house that I came back after being out for five minutes and I came in knowing was she had like full face mask on, sun, plaster on my mum was plastering a wall. I think Marion was mixing for her and I think Val was painting the ceiling or something. And I just looked around thinking, it's like the mammy dream team. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, the, but most of all, Nori's just been a great friend to me too because in that time that we're living together, like me like Avian, I could come in and just, just chat to her for ages. She has a great knack of reading people's emotions and just saying the right thing. And she's just, she's incredible. Uh, and I, I can't thank you enough for what, what you've done for us. All right, Jar, cheers. First of all, cheers, thanks for the. <laughs> So I, I speak for most people in here, I think, to say, I'm in awe of your, I think he's just unbelievable. Just wherever I go with the man, I just see people radiating towards him. Like that, most of this year, I walked down the street with him, Gory, it's like walking down with the Lord Mayor, just everyone just to say hello. We went to Carlingford for the stag, and he rocked the place out of it, which isn't a surprise to anyone. But what I love about Jer most is just his passion. He's, he's passionate about his sport, passionate about his music and like you say, say when you consider I'm a non-dope Man United fan who has a no in my head I'd say he's had to, to look past quite a lot with me <laughs> <laughs> uh, but above all that he, he's passionate about family and you know, in the year that I became a husband and a dad I could not have picked a better man just to, to be around observing listening to and as well as as normally, I just I can't thank you enough for, for what you've done for us. So. Thank you. So I also have to apologise because when I asked for the blessing, I gave him a shout at about two o'clock, and he was in the morgue in Temple Oak, <laughs> and we left at twelve o'clock, go back home. So we had a fair few points in us. I ha I had five hundred candles ready to be lit in Peter's present the next morning, so, so the job had to be done. Sorry. <laughs> Alright, my mum. Waiting for those grandkids like waiting for a bus. 
Okay. <laughs> 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 uh, to me, inspiration is going from anybody in my home. Uh, she's the hardest working person I've, I've ever come across. I've literally seen her sweat, blood and tears in creating unbelievable opportunities for, for me and Mark. Uh, and like pointed out, we were not little angels. We were far from it. Uh, but she could definitely handle this. And I think she's done it in her own sort of unique, often crazy, often hilarious way. Uh, if she wrote a book, the book would be titled A Man's Guide to Pulling Strokes. <laughs> and I'm going to give you one chapter out of that book, a little line out of it. It's Christmas, and we're, uh, we're driving home from the big smoke. I think I'm six, Mark's eight. And we've been, we're completely souped up on fizzy drinks and chocolate from being in the panto. <laughs> And uh, next, understandably, she has the foot to the floor. So ne next thing, the blue lights, she sees the blue lights, she pulls over. And Gar gets out of the car, he's walking towards the car. And uh, in her own very unique way, she's thinking, how can I get out of this? So she turns to us, and she goes, lads, uh, I'm going to get arrested and go to prison now. So you just need to, to sort yourselves out, all right? <laughs> <laughs> that car did not get close to that car and he kicked off. Well, seriously, <laughs> the three of you have been incredible parents to us. You've been, you're already incredible grandparents. And if Marcus is half as proud of us as we are of you, then we know we're doing it all right. Okay, last person. That is my stunning, out of this world, beautiful way. Let's all just stop for a moment and pay homage to the fact that she gave birth four months ago. Ah! Ah! <laughs> no, look, I could never have imagined being lucky enough to meet someone like, like Amy. Um, it, it took a while to meet her, but as soon as I did, I fell in love with her straight away. But as I also realised pretty quickly that you know everybody loves Amy. She has that that personality that she just she greets everybody with a smile. She's just is thinks about everyone before herself. She does she prioritises everybody's happiness over her own. Um, and I could go on and on. If I was to pick one word just to describe her to me today and every day really it would just simply be perfection she she's incredible <laughs> on top of all those lovely traits i'm also proud to be able to say that my wife is some crack <laughs> <laughs> We didn't meet in magical, mystical circumstances. It was quite chaotic if we look back and we were going to tell the truth about it. But one thing we've always had is, is a laugh, and, and it, we still do. The, the first time was, uh, as it was pointed out earlier on, was at Will's birthday in Manchester. We were doing pub golf, and we, she was coming over to surprise Will for this, so she herself and Laura came in the door of pub in Manchester, fully dressed in golf attire. And to be honest, the first thing, as they came in, tippy toed across the floor and jumped on Will. And the first thing, obviously gorgeous, but I also thought, these girls are wild. <laughs> <laughs> but what also struck me was, was that smile. Uh, and to think I now get to wake up next to that warm, loving, Sometimes mischievous, as you're pointed out. Always joyful, unbreakable smile. Every day for, me, for the rest of my life is a dream come true. And she's already given me the ultimate gift in the most beautiful little boy that has brightened up our lives just beyond belief. So we got together three and a half years ago. Um, it was just a huge amount of time. But I suppose in that time we've had a massive amount of but huge highs and lows. 
and I suppose such is life, I'm sure there will be challenges ahead that I've been no doubt we'll get through together. But also with Aileen, I just know there's many, many adventures. Um, today stand here, I do, I feel like the luckiest, proudest, just most excited person on the planet for us to come. Uh, So just, just to finish, I just want to ask you guys to stand and raise a glass. So just on behalf of myself and Aideen, thanks again for being here today. Thanks for being part of our memories and thanks for being part of the good times to come. Yes. We love you guys. Today it had been a while And we forgot each other's names But it didn't matter Cause deep inside The feeling still remained the same We talked of knowing one Before you met And how you feel more than you see And other worlds that lie in spaces in between And angels you can see And all the faces that I know Have that same familiar glow I think I must have known them somewhere once before All the faces that I know Get home at night You're the face I need Take my hand And we can go walking And we can talk about Whatever is on your mind Be my friend But secretly like me I wanna catch you staring and make you go alright. I love the way your hair falls in the summer. I'll treat you like your father treats your mother. And I'm kinda scared of your older brother. Oh yeah. You're all that I'm needing. You're all that I'm feeling. And I'll be the one that's kicking and screaming. When you at the door every evening, oh yeah, your feet in the sun, and mine in the water. We can.
can explore these hills if that's what you want to do. You know I can't stay when it gets cold in the evenings. Now I'm standing there freezing, but my clothes look so good on you. You play with my hair like there's no other. I'm no longer scared of your older brother. He said, "We're、well, cool, man. I know you love her." Oh yeah. I'll get you in loads of trouble. Give you love on the door. We can get drunk. Our words can get muddled. No cigarette smoke will burst that little bubble. Oh no. Talk about whatever is on your mind. Let me 
Take this woman to be your wife, to live together in marriage. Do you promise to love her, comfort her, honour and keep her, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to her, to belong to the devotion of this? A.V. Lennon, take this man to be your husband, to live together in marriage. Do you promise to love him, comfort him, honour and keep him, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, be faithful to him, as long as you go shall live?
searching high and low. The one thing that is true, darling, I. 